Um, so what, what I'm going to do, actually, very briefly, is just share with you... I, I haven't got my Ashmolean hat on today. This is about OUM, and it's about GLAM, and it's about a collective endeavour to bring the collections into the mainstream of Oxford teaching, in particular, because we all know about engagement with objects and teaching with objects, but actually digital access. And there's the clue in this is that what is it, what it's, was it, what we're trying to do is develop what is special and valued about digital access that may make teaching with objects sustainable and durable in our community. So um, what I really wanted to say was we got a problem, <laughs> Houston, which is Oxford has what we are now constantly and consistently referring to as intellectual assets. Our collections are on a par with the libraries, with the museums, and in fact, what are we in GLAM? We're collectively curating in intellectual assets, historic assets. But what's very clear, when you talk to the heads of undergraduate studies across the university, when you talk to faculty members, is they say, yeah, no problem, we love the idea of teaching with objects, but if I've got a student revising for an extended essay or exam over Christmas, how are they going to access the objects that they've been taught with in handling sessions? They can walk into the Bodley, they can walk into the college libraries, they've got electronic access 24-7. How are you going to make your material accessible to us as well? How do you also make it interactive? How do you make it flexible? Students can sit around and look at articles together, they read together, they take material, they chop and change, they cut and paste. How can we see your material in this interactive way and open some doors for, for students to actually experiment with things that isn't just a top-down teaching session. And at the end of the day, the comments we get back from faculty are, this is brilliant, but we've been teaching with text for over 800 years. We kind of know what we're doing. There's a pathway. We don't really have a method and a theory for teaching with objects and incorporating objects into how we teach. So we're kind of hesitant and not really sure and likely we're going to need guidance. So those are the issues that, collectively speaking, we put together and applied for a grant from the IT Innovation Fund, which saw the value in what we're doing. There's a lot of words, but basically it's to say that for collaborative study, for collaborative revision, for teaching in a really innovative fashion with the objects beyond the classroom, beyond the handling session. How can we make this part of our everyday work? And underpinning that all is what is the digital platform supposed to look like that enables students to become, to use Nicholas' word, empowered? How can we bring in a diversity of voices from students who aren't used to working with objects? We get this all the time in our classrooms. The middle class students Mummy and Daddy brought them to museums right from the year dot, and then we, got, we have a whole slew of other students who are grappling with concepts at Oxford that are sophisticated but also new. So at the end of it, can we really sit down as a team and come up with a project, a pilot project, that addresses some of these issues? Well, fortunately, Ted Cotterworth is here, who is the IT guru who's designed our new platform. This platform, Don't Frighten Horses, is sitting behind Webler. It will be, it's just been finished. It will be accessible. Uh, we're going to be testing it over the course of this term, which introduces people into the world of objects <coughs> through digital use, and it's specific to the courses that the student is on. So what I'm giving you an example of, here's a course being taught by Professor Howard Hodgson in history, uh, who is a 17th century uh, specialist in the history of ideas. What we're looking at is going to be a very data-rich, image-rich platform that puts in bibliographies, readings, links to other sites, images from museums, all our museums, from textual images from the Bodley and other libraries, images right across I'll just go one further, to um, objects that are in our built environment here in Oxford, the Corpus Sundial, which is several metres tall. <coughs> and all of these objects are either going to be photogrammetrically reproduced in 2D high res or 3D. And I, unfortunately, the site is so new, I haven't got the actual twist and turn 
but we are going to be able to offer a chance for students to interact with objects, to turn them, to manipulate them, to zoom in and out, to tag them, to annotate them, to create chat rooms, layers of chat around them, to use them in class, to, to pin all sorts of classroom and visual observations and archive them as part of the course. So that when that student goes home at Christmas and starts revising for their extended essay or their exam, they can go back and remember, this is like an, almost like an aid memoir, all the conversations that were held, the details that were observed by them and by their cohort, and pin that all together, stitch it all together into a very rich, image-rich and text-rich package. And concurrently with this, of course, what we're also doing is trying to influence the curricula and request and have through committees requests for exam questions to start including material culture in the questions. And to some degree, we've had some success. But what's really interesting, and this is uh, from a course that I co-teach with a member of the English faculty, the annotations that come up are tiered so that a student can go back and say, well, I'm going to write an essay about curtains. I can go back and look at all the other examples that we've looked at together and collate them and think about what it was we were talking about at the time. So the annotation part of it is really quite interesting. And in the conversation I had with colleagues at the Pitt Rivers in particular, we were talking about the opportunity here for students from different backgrounds to inject their own perspectives into classroom work that they might not feel comfortable doing necessarily live or might want to do after they've reflected on the digital avatars and the digital formats and say, you know what, I have something to contribute here, but I just want to work with it for a while and get comfortable. And digital natives likely are going to start at times with a digital entry point. So what we're doing in summary, and this is obviously a very brief overview, is, is to talk about empowering both teachers and students with a tool that enables the classroom work to continue after class in a way that continues to accord a certain amount of value to the object and to its relationship to the text that students read. But guess what? Again, 800 years of text-based work means we have to create, from scratch, a method and a theory for integrated text and object teaching. So that's part of what the Cabinet Project is about, is building a sustainable story to tell to the teachers and say, look, this is okay, this does work, we're going to monitor it, we're going to assess it, we're going to keep on top of it, and we're going to be able to plug this in, in a fairly permanent way, to the way Oxford does its teaching, not across all subjects necessarily, but across quite a few. And we're breaking it down into looking at things like, does a student find it more memorable to handle the object, or is it the process of handling the object and working with the object memorable? And that's a key question. It's just been emerging from workshops we've been conducting across GLAM. And at the end of the day, how much support, how much guidance, how much work do we have to do in order to make this a durable part of the Oxford landscape. So we're having a great time, but the grant runs out at Christmas and we are seeking funding to continue this because so many people are committing their courses online, uploading their material, and we're hoping, quite honestly, to make this a durable museum offering and intellect and as part of the intellectual assets that the museum offers. So thank you very much. That's it.